Hello everyone. Welcome to this quick guide on how to get Docker and Kitematic up and running on your machine. We'll start by discussing some of my motivations for using a solution like Docker, followed by an introduction to containers and then Docker itself. We'll then move on to video recordings demonstrating how you can install Docker on Mac OS, Ubuntu and Windows 10. Please take note of the publication date of this video as the instructions for your operating system may have changed due to software upgrades. You can find the article which complements this video on blog.shenrastami.com. There are many reasons to use a solution like Docker, but for me, it's mainly to achieve the same environment on many different machines. For example, I have a desktop computer running Ubuntu at home, a desktop computer running Windows at the office, and a MacBook running macOS for everything in between. I need some convenient solution which allows me to work in the same environment on all three machines, so that all my work behaves the same wherever I'm working. I also don't want to have to maintain three different environments on three different operating systems. And that includes working around the numerous issues which can be encountered on different builds of the same software. As well as my own needs, I need a solution for my colleagues and students, so that I don't have to ask them to install and configure many pieces of software, some of which may require specific versions, just so we can share our work. Similarly, I don't want to have to install different versions of software on my own systems just to run the work of others. I'd rather keep them separate. When sharing work, it's often the case that something will work as intended on one machine, but might not on another. And finally, when publishing my work, I'd like my readers to be able to reproduce my results in my papers. There are many variables which can affect the results of an experiment, and reducing those and making the process easier for my reader is important to me. To address those issues, I've started relying on containers. Containers are executable instances of images which isolate software from the host. Container images typically consist of a base layer and additional software layers. These images cannot be modified, but they can be layered to create new images. You can quickly and easily create many container instances of the same image if you need to. These are lightweight, standalone, and provide consistent environments for applications. Docker is a popular platform for creating, managing, and executing containers and images with support for many operating systems. With Docker, I no longer have to ask colleagues and students to install a long list of software along with their specific configurations. I only need to ask them to install Docker and then share my image with them. This can all be used for free through Docker Community Edition. To help you get up and running with Docker, I've recorded myself installing Docker on macOS High Sierra, Ubuntu 16.04, and Windows 10 Pro. There are many different ways to install Docker and manage images and containers. So I've just gone with what I think might be the easiest way to get you up and running. You can skip through this video to find the particular installation that you're interested in. Starting on Mac OS, let's open up Safari and go to docker.com. Once it's loaded, let's hover over Get Docker and click Mac. On this page, click Download from Docker Store and then click Get Docker. Once it's downloaded, let's open that file and drag Docker into Applications. Browse your applications and launch Docker. You should see an icon appear in your top bar. Click on the icon to check if Docker has started yet. Once it has, click Kitematic. You'll receive this message letting you know you need to download Kitematic and put it in the Applications folder. So let's click on that link, 
And once it's downloaded, let's copy Kitematic into our Applications folder. Now let's try opening Kitematic again. Now that we have Kitematic, we can search a repository of images and start creating containers. Let's try TensorFlow by Google. Simply search for name and click Create. This will download the required image and create a container from it. This image uses a Jupyter front end. So let's copy in this token, click the web preview, and then paste the token. This will allow us to log in. Once we're inside, we can see some example files. Click on Hello TensorFlow and let's run this code to see if it's worked. And there we have it. All done for macOS. Next, we'll move on to Ubuntu. Onwards to Ubuntu, let's open up Firefox, type in docker.com, hover over get docker and click Ubuntu, click get from docker store, scroll down to the bottom and click that link, and now we have the documentation for installing docker on Ubuntu. Let's load up the terminal and follow the instructions. And now with Docker installed, let's try running a container of the TensorFlow image from Google. Now we're ready to visit the Jupyter Notebook front end, which is being served as part of this image. Click on the hyperlink in the terminal, and here you have some example files. Let's run the Hello TensorFlow Notebook to check that the installation worked. And there we have it, all done. Now for Windows. So inside Windows, let's open our browser and visit docker.com. Once we're on there, hover over Get Docker and click Windows. Click Download from Docker Store and then click Get Docker. Once downloaded, run the installer and click close and log out once it's completed. When you return to Windows, you should see Docker is installed and running. Right click it and left click on Kitematic. You'll see that you need to download it and store it in a particular location. Click on the link and save it. Extract the contents of the archive Create a directory named Kitematic at the required location. And then copy over the contents of the extracted archive. Now you're ready to run Kitematic. 
Let's try TensorFlow by Google. Simply search for name and click Create. This will download the required image and create a container from it. This image uses a Jupyter front end. So let's copy in this token, click the web preview, and then paste the token. This will allow us to log in. Once we're inside, we can see some example files. Click on Hello TensorFlow and let's run this code to see if it's worked. And there we have it, all done for Windows.